So now in the last video, we charged this supercapacitor uh, bank here to 14 volts. These are 2.7 volt supercapacitors that uh, claim 500 farad, but uh, they fall short of that. But in uh, any case, we charged it up to 14 volts instead of 16.2, which 2.7 times 6 is, because it was a bit unbalanced, as we saw. So we're going to address that in this video. But in any case... Uh, 500 farad supercapacitors when you put them in series their capacitance gets divided so 500 divided by 6 you can expect about 83.333 uh, farad but uh, this also falls short on the capacity we uh, calculated about uh, 57 farad probably so in any case as I said they're in series this one the vol voltage is falling short of the other ones we'll look at that first before we do that though, we're going to look at the uh, total voltage because it's been somewhere around 24 hours. Now, I charge it to 14 volts. Now it says 9.6 right there. Now we come to this supercapacitor and uh, we got 1.1 uh, basically volts, which is far shorter than the other one. So that was the one that was short, 1.7. And uh, we'll look at that 1.6. And I already measured it. We're between about 1.6 and 1.8 volts for all of these. So what I'm going to do is just raise the voltage of the uh, one capacitor that is falling behind the other ones. Hopefully after that point, because they can get thrown off and stay off. Hopefully once we get it more balanced with the other ones, it'll stay balanced over time. So now I rotated the uh, capacitors here so that our uh, lower voltage one is over here next to the power supply. The uh, power supply, we are going to set the voltage that we want to make the cell. So that's going to be uh, the uh, single capacitor, I should say. So that's going to be 1.7 volts. And normally I use a 5 volt circuits with a maximum of 20 milliamps of current. Now we're going to need a lot more current because these are uh, super capacitors. And so let's uh, just bump that right up to one right there. So we can charge it faster. Uh, you know, relatively quality super capacitors can take pretty much all the current that uh, you can give them up to probably about uh, 50 amps or so. The rest of the circuitry maybe cannot handle that much. But in any case, usually you don't have to worry about too much current for uh, super capacitors within limit so we're still to the uh, negative side of the circuit there that connects to the negative side of the super capacitor all we have to do now the output is on and uh, a brief surge of current though they might think it's a short circuit but uh, there you go we have the uh, power bank here charging the uh, single capacitor and uh, let's see if I can get that to hold a little better so that we get a steadier voltage but in any case it's not uh, completely steady, but you can see the uh, voltage rising right there. So now I did charge it a bit, but uh, it'd be better to have voltage on the display there than current. And uh, I think the current was bouncing around so much because uh, we're not making a perfect connection the way that we have this here. The solder gets oxidated a bit. But in any case, it looks like we're closing in on uh, 1.7 volts pretty good. We still have the constant current though, now it's constant voltage right there. So let's uh, turn this to look at how much current it's providing. And uh, current's going to drop down over time as it uh, gets a little bit closer to the voltage that we are aiming for. So now jumping ahead, we're down to about uh, 200 milliamps or so of uh, current a little bit more and it would go down a little bit more as we get closer to the final voltage But that's probably close enough So let's see where we are at. This was the weak one right there We were shooting for about 1.7 volts and there you can see we're a bit shy We were still pumping in about uh, 200 milliamps though. So as I said before as uh, the amount of current that was going into it went lower we would know we would be at a closer uh, voltage so this doesn't change the voltage of the other capacitors only the one that we went across so that's uh one nice thing you can uh, balance them after the fact 
if uh, one of them is off balance really easily as long as the uh, terminals are exposed as they are right here. So I'm going to turn this off. So I made a mistake earlier. We were looking at the uh, current that the power supply was providing but it was so close to what the starting voltage was I kind of got confused and thought we were looking at a voltage bouncing around like it wasn't making a good connection or something and uh, so it was actually a uh, current we looked at before I changed it to voltage so hopefully that didn't uh, confuse anybody but uh, we were balancing it at the time so I can't really go back and uh, reshoot it because it's already balanced I'd have to unbalance it which actually isn't too hard you can take a resistor and just let current go through the resistor over time uh, however many you want in series wherever you put the uh, resistor will uh, their voltage will go down as they pass current through it and the ones that it's not being connected to will hold their uh, voltages so you could just do one or a couple or whatnot uh, whatever you want just don't uh, discharge it all the way down and uh, if you have one that is a lot lower than the other ones if you discharge the pack too far then they're gonna start the ones that have a voltage are gonna actually start reverse charging the one with the lowest voltage once it gets to zero volts it'll get a negative voltage and these are polarized uh, right there that side has to be the uh, more negative if you reverse charge it it gets more positive and that messes up the chemistry within it so in any case this video went on long enough hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other ones that I'm posting and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video.